students welcome to legacy is academy today we are going to discuss about the recent issue which is news where pakistan has been decided to put off or we can say remove from the gray list of fata that is financial action task force so in this particular video we are going to discuss what does it basically mean what is fata and what is the gray list of fata at the same time we are also going to discuss how this removal of pakistan from the gray list is going to help pakistan financially so first of all the reason why this issue is news because very recently yesterday actually fatf that is financial action task force has put pakistan off the gray list after 4 years this is a development that has been welcomed across the country in the pakistan second what we can say is as the impact of this removal of, removal of pakistan from this list it is believed that it will come as a major reprieve as the international watchdog on terror financing and money laundering has removed pakistan from the list of country earlier it was under the increased monitoring category fatf also while removing pakistan off the great list has issued in a statement where it has said that pakistan has completed two action plan which comprises of 34 point task list in the period since 2018 and that is why in a statement it is also said that it welcomes pakistan's significant process as far as the aml or cft mechanism is concerned aml or cft stand for any anti money laundering as well as the countering uh, financing of terrorism now let us try to understand what is the fatf so if we try to understand the development of fatf it began somewhere in the year 1989 when by a meeting that was taking place between g7 or group of seven member countries in paris they established fatf mainly to examine and develop measures to combat money laundering further the next important development happened in year 2001 when fatf expanded its mandate and it also included and incorporated efforts to combat terrorism financing in addition to the money laundering the next important development happened in year 2012 where it added efforts to counter the financing of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction so right now there are three areas which is under the domain or mandate of fatf one is to combat money laundering second is to combat terrorism financing or terrorist financing and third also to ensure that proliferation of weapons of mass destruction or wmd as it is called also does not take place via the global financial system now if we talk about the members of fatf there are total 37 member countries are there out of the 37 member countries there are two there are two uh, such stakeholders are there which can be considered as an organization for example we have european union is one of the member countries of the fatf as far as india is concerned as you can see india is also an active member of fatf let us try to understand now the mandate of fatf so as far as the fatf and its uh, its website is concerned it has declared itself as a watchdog to tackle terrorism financing not only that it is also considered as an author and custodian of such an international regime which will ensure that the global financial systems as well as the funds that is flowing in or through the global financial system is not misused to fund terrorist activities the third important mandate is the uh, or we can say the third major task that fatf carries out is that it also set standards and promote effective implementation of legal regulatory and operational measures to tackle money laundering to tackle terrorism financing and to tackle the proliferation of wmd so money laundering terrorist financing and other threats to the integrity of international financial system that international financial system can phase is also something that is tackled by the fatf so these are the broad mandate under which fatf functions so the main question that comes is that what is the gray list that fatf put countries into so fatf basically is involved in periodic and regular assessment of various countries and under this assessment the countries which fail to prevent international money laundering and terrorist financing and are therefore put on the global watch list for the bad behavior not only that as per the fatf assessment currently several countries are there which are under the uh, fatf gray list now currently including pakistan there are 24 countries but now since pakistan is off the gray list now there are 23 countries under the fatf gray list some of the major countries that are under gray list are philippines syria yemen uae is there uganda morocco jamaica and some of the tax havens such as barbados cayman island and panama has also been included as the in the gray list 
Now the question comes that what is the rationale or the objective behind putting the countries into the FATF grey list? So the main rationale behind putting the countries on the grey list is that FATF does not basically if you look at the terminology used by FATF it does not use the grey list. The terminology that is actually used is something that is referred as jurisdiction that is under increased monitoring and that means the countries are in the grey list. So basically once the countries or jurisdictions are put under increased monitoring now the country will have to commit to resolve swift, swiftly the identified strategic deficiencies within agreed time frames and is also subject to extra checks by the FATF as far as its financial system is concerned. Not only that, the countries also have to take a step to address strategic deficiencies in the regimes so that it can effectively counter money laundering, terrorist financing and the proliferation financing. Once a country is put under the great list or is included in the jurisdiction under increased monitoring list, after that if the country is not able to take required action as, give, as uh, directed by the FATF, in that case there is high risk country can be even blacklisted. So that is the risk of being blacklisted that ensures the countries take appropriate action to counter all these ills that their uh, financial system is basically giving rise to. So if we talk about the countries as we, had dis as we have discussed before, these are some of the major countries that are under the grey list of FATF. At the same time, as of now, there are only two countries which has been put under the black list of FATF. It is Iran and the Democratic Republic, uh, People's Republic of Korea. Few years back, Turkey was also put under the blacklist. However, now it has been removed or taken off the blacklist. So the question comes that why after four years, Pakistan has been removed from the grey list of FATF. So to uh, give justification of this uh, stand or give justification of this step, FATF clearly has said that Pakistan few years back has made an international commitment at the highest political level to ensure that FATF's directions are followed. And in that case, it has continuously worked with the FATF to strengthen its anti-money anti laundering and countering of terrorism financing regime. At the same time, FATF, while releasing a statement yesterday, has also said that Pakistan has strengthened the effectiveness of its AML or CFT regime and has also addressed at the same time technical deficiencies to meet the commitment of its action plan. And it is in this context, FATF has decided to put Pakistan off the grey list. So what are the benefits of removal that Pakistan can uh, be assured about or, or Pakistan can expect in the coming future? So as you know that Pakistan is currently facing a very severe economic crisis that has been compounded by the political problems, political disturbances as well as the recent disastrous flood that the country has witnessed. So in this context, it is believed that the Pakistan's removal of the Great List will essentially serve or will uh, boost the reputation of Pakistan at the global level or at the international level. At the same time, it is akin to providing Pakistan a clean bill of health from the international community on terrorism financing. And the main advantage of this is that Pakistan will now able to easily access the international finance. Because what happens is if you want to have access to international banking institutions or international monetary fund or world bank, in that case, the, these organizations are basically shy away from those countries which are under the, uh, we can say, grey list of FATF. And that is why when it has been removed from the grey list of FATF, now these organizations can easily help and give fund to Pakistan to take care of its economic crisis. So what has been the stand of India as far as this removal of Pakistan is concerned? So as per the statement released by the Ministry of External Affairs and spokesperson Rindam Bakhti, he has said that as a result of FATF scrutiny, Pakistan has been forced to take some actions against well-known terrorists. And these terrorists include even those who were directly or indirectly involved in attacks against the entire international community in Mumbai on 26-11-2008. At the same time, India also has said that it is in the global interest for the world that it remain it is in the global interest that the world remains clear that pakistan must continue to take credible verifiable irreversible and sustained action against terrorism and terrorist financing emanating from territories under its control so that is all about the stance or a stand of india as far as this particular state is concerned so I hope you understood about this whole issue that what is grey list, why Pakistan has been taken off the grey list and what is its wider implications. So that is all for this particular video. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.